there you two and welcome to a 61 degree Sunday the 29th I think it is maybe it's the 28th of uh, of January despite what it looks like out here there's supposed to be no chance of rain although the roads it hasn't rained I mean it sprinkled earlier today it, it's like almost four o'clock here so uh, I think it's quarter after three I'm not sure what time it is but anyway um, it's the humidity so high everything's just staying wet so despite whatever let's take the Himalayan for a ride let's get her out there and uh and uh take a rip so we'll see if, if everything's all hunky-dory on this old thing or not it's our first uh, live and in action with the Kent cam Probably gonna get it dirty because it's just nothing ever dried out today. It just stayed wet. Gotta pick your uh, pick your lines here. Pick your lines wisely. All right, let's see how this works. <laughs> we'll see you here in a bit. So a lot like the uh, the classic 350 with the cam and stuff. It's a uh, it's definitely noticeable but not just like slamming in your face it just feels feels quicker more responsive and I don't know it just has a happier feel to it I get water splashing up here already but uh yeah, it, it, it gets up up the speed a lot quicker so it definitely has a top end to it and it revs real quick too if, you know just throttling up and wow it goes up the red line almost instant <laughs> which is very nice we'll just cruise around here and see how things are she was kind of idling fast last night it's a it's no big deal that you just gotta lift the the tank and adjust the air bleed screw on top of the throttle body um, so we'll see how how she comes out supposed to idle uh, at 1250 plus or minus 50 so it's from 12 to 13 but I was what looked like a, around 15 last night look it's still got all the gravel in the road from from wintertime stuff well it's still wintertime we're nowhere near over oh yeah you just definitely feel <laughs> A peppy liveliness to it and uh, uh, like you explained it the same way you know where the you know the power and the torque kind of goes up like the mid-range and then just kind of you're just revving to rev it kind of flattens out it, it seems to pull through you know I mean just light little changes in throttle you can you feel feels more substantial like I said with the 350 but it's early on you know and gone very far you know oh man oh you can see that where that flooded oh, lots of gravel I'm sure I'm just wiping this thing out but the fact that it's not raining is nice to me good lord yeah You can, you can feel it in the seat. You know, I did the calibration stuff. Actually, I got up at 5 o'clock this morning. It was still dark. It was just in my head. Uh, what's crazy about that, I went out about 11 o'clock, went out there and uh, put the tank and stuff back on it. And I just gave it a quick, you know, like a 30-second run. Just lit it off. Boop, 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 boop. I go, yeah, she's good. So I didn't fire or anything last or when I was with you guys. I was gonna put the tank on this morning, ended up doing it last night. And uh so I went out this morning and uh, did that, you know, 15 minute hold it between and cycle between two and three thousand RPMs. That's that's the sole break in of it. You're done. I mean, think about it. It's running a roller rockers. 
if you're beating anything in, it's the journals riding in the head. If, uh, if that's not right pretty much right away, you're, you're in serious trouble. There's no uh, bedding in of the rockers to the cam lobes. They're riding on roller rockers. But they do have that, which is, you know, pretty, pretty violent, you know, bringing her about the fire for a couple of seconds, make sure oils run to the top and, and do that two and three thousand RPM deal with the fan on it. Then I let it completely cool, cool down and went back out at about 11 o'clock and um, so about five hours later or so and I let it sit there from stone cold let it sit and idle for 15 minutes so it'll self map itself and um, yeah well, it was good my only concern was you know at the end of the 15 minutes this morning it, it just seemed like it was idling fast it's, it's about yeah, see, she's coming up to about 15. Definitely knocks that flat top in out of the top of it for sure. And it pulls hard all the way to red line. Yeah, she rips. I think it adds about five horsepower to it. Which is, which is fine by me. the same deal it doesn't do anything to the bottom end and uh, despite no decompression release the uh, overlap of the valves is enough it, it every time I've started it, it does uh, no different from how it started before it just lights right off you hit the starter and it, boom for people going oh it's that's gonna be overstraining this the starter motor what they don't understand, they probably don't even understand the concept of valve overlap. When, uh, when you have both valves open at the same time at low speeds, that is, that's a massive compression leak. <laughs> D-cell, the compression braking under D-cell feels the same, nice and strong. Please don't tell me I'm going to have to end up following this guy all the way through here. That would be unfortunate. So it just takes that kind of very soft top end performance of these things. And the 350 is the same way. It just gives them a little loving boost. Nothing big. You definitely notice it when you're riding it. Those little beehive things? Nope. They're buckets over mole holes. Somebody's got a project going on. I don't think this guy knows where he's going. Looks like he's going to do a turn around there, doesn't it? Yeah, that thing, as soon as it gets over like 3,000, it's got, it's definitely got a pull. That is a ton of gravel on the road. <laughs> Definitely not going to set the world on fire. But when I pulled out and hit the highway, man, I was up to speed faster than I've ever been with this thing. And I, it has that feeling that, you know, we're bombing along at upper speeds. If you needed to pass somebody, yeah, you wouldn't have a problem. You're not gonna go blistering past them, but you can definitely execute a, a safe pass. Where before you had to, you had to kind of plan that out. <laughs> you get st stuck behind somebody going really slow. You know, you grow up with all these high horsepower, highfalutin sport bikes. You know, and you just poof. <laughs> they give you the smallest of a gap you go I'm out <laughs> oh. I love how it just has this sense of the more I give it the more it seems to give and it, 
it seems to pull. I haven't bounced off the rev limiter yet, but it pulls all the way up. There's there's not a flat spot in it. It'd be interesting to see a yeah torque a torque and horsepower map on this thing. Yeah, dude, she don't sign off. It just I imagine till the till the rev limiter hits. That's not even full throttle. That's just rolling on. I don't think I've hit full throttle yet. It just climbs right up there. She's really happy. Look, the water from the road is it's coming over the front fender and splashing back. I'm very happy with this. Definitely very happy. Definitely has a, a liveliness to it. They've never had that before. It was a great little motorcycle, went down the road great. Goes as fast as you need to, but it was never in a hurry. Now it has a little, little extra pep to her step. You know, even if those, oh, I guess I am fast. Yeah, I'm riding it way higher than the RPMs here, too. <laughs> yeah, you can go racing around with your buddy on one of these things now. To its scorching, you know, just shy of 90 miles per hour top speed. So you're not going to do a whole lot of chasing. But you're not going to get totally left. You'll be back there. Depends on, uh, you know, if you you pack your jewels in a wheel barrel or not. You can go really fast on something really slow. You seem to have some skills and a lot of uh, a lot of nerves. Good lord, young girls. Never see that in the city. And if you did see that in the city, it would be a whole different thing. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy that? We've evolved with all the craziness that you see something like that and go, good lord. In my era, literally you wouldn't think twice about that. But the world has, has made it a, a weird thing to see a couple of young girls walk along by themselves like that. Wow, I'd almost, I might have to do that. I have to take Kelly's Himalayan back to back to this thing. It just wants to pull. Especially anything over like roughly about 35. It just has a I'm ready to go feeling to her. Got a nod at the farmer boys. Got all that water out there. Hope Going up this hill, this will be a good test. Because this hill before, you had to hit that thing. Well, look at that. That was going across the road here not too long ago. Wow. I haven't seen those dobies out there in a while. Water over roadway. But if you didn't hit this thing just right, and if you, you know, you thought you were bogging down, you downshifted, it put you in a in the wrong gear and you were revving and you're revving outside the the power especially the torque. Oh it's gravel bad. Oh well this definitely put me in the wrong gear. Okay, what am I that's third. And she's yeah, she gains power. I'm I'm, I'm definitely not on the throttle. I'm just nudging it. Here's where it would kiss to death if you slow down and then you had to speed up to, oh man, speed up to the next gear. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> oh man. It's not 
not earth shattering, but if you spend a lot of time on the Himalayan, you're going to go, heck yeah. Hello, Hemi. Welcome back to the party, my friend. <laughs> she took a, a leave and, uh, you know, spiffed herself up a little bit. Oh, yeah, I mean, going up that hill, that was always a problem. You had to hit that thing just right to just hold her steady, steady and not lug it but keep it you know in that in that torque curve it almost sound like you're lugging it but if you downshifted it was revving and it was just revving to rev you weren't you weren't gaining anything you're losing torque very nice definitely definitely changed the bike that dirt road we can say we uh we visited Squatchy Hill up here yeah see she's back to it's almost 1600 rpms you out there Squatchy well that's a small one that means that the big one's probably around here somewhere too Yeah, the compression braking adds a substantial amount to the braking. <laughs> I mean, I rode that 83 Venture for all them years, and that thing was notorious for no brakes. But, you know, it's so big and heavy that you downshift and... Dude, the compression braking was half your braking on that thing. That's how bad the brakes were. And then you had to do the weirdest thing. Everything in you told you not to do this because you know how to ride a motorcycle, but you boot stomp the holy heck out of that rear brake when you're panic stopping. Boot stomp the rear brake and, and downshift. Get that compression braking going on and then pretty much everything you can throw at the front brake, which was nothing. Because the it was link not linked but it was a uh, I guess not, not technically linked but when you grab the front brake it ran one of the discs when you grab the rear brake it ran the rear and the opposing disc so uh, yeah really hard then you ride the same bike that does has the same problem you just learn how to ride it but um, yeah really hard to convince yourself to slam on the rear brake ever that's a rookie mistake number one There's some girls again anyway crazy stories people you know boast about their skills and uh Usually the more they talk about it, the less they actually have. I think talking about it makes them, makes them feel like they're better than what they are. And that can be very dangerous. But see, there's the downshift again. I didn't even, didn't even hesitate to downshift. Before, I would go, don't downshift. Because you won't be able to gain power and get that gear back. <laughs> You're going to get the gear back. Well, this is crazy thing. Of course, GoPro makes us probably look flat. That's it's a substantial a substantial hill, I promise you. <laughs> wow, looks like bright skies coming. And that's always the way. You try to go out for a ride and hope you can squeak through. And uh you get home, it turns beautiful. Now it's too late to go for a ride. <laughs> turning out 
nice out here. Well, nicer. It's been raining all week. The only sunshine I've seen all week was a couple of times at work last week. I guess technically it's a new week now. Oh, I can see the outline of St. Helens there. Holy moly, she got some snow on her. I can't see rain here at all. Yep, you can see just one side coming up. You see some of the rocks on the sharp sides going, facing this way. Woo, she is definitely covered in snow. Yeah, super impressed. Again, I want to be perfectly clear. It's not like suddenly you gained, you doubled the horsepower. You've added roughly 20% or about five horsepower in this case. That's not 20% of basically nothing. Still is mostly nothing, but it makes her very, very, very happy and usable. I am crazy impressed. Definitely nice when you're out bombing around the highways and byways, you know has more pep to her step the old gal man just the standing water everywhere you know it's crazy it hasn't really rained that heavy since the flooding started what was that Friday night and you know it rained off and on yesterday but it wasn't super bad but yet everything's flooded it, the, it's not going away but the humidity is just through the roof Anyway, thanks for coming along for Rip Snort on the old Himalayan with a fancy new bump stick and whatever that air filter did. I, I, I don't imagine a whole bunch. I'm sure it adds to it. But, uh, yeah. You have to just put this filter and the stock snorkel on there, and, which is probably not a bad idea. <laughs> But the way that thing is set, I don't, I don't know if you can use the stock. Well, the stock one goes inside. Yes, it probably work. But anyway, my mom on down the road. See you guys in a bit. Thanks for coming along for a rip. Well, hello there, you do. As soon as I get back, no chance of rain the rest of the day. It's like you know, two, three percent, something like that. And um, <laughs> it's raining out here now. Of course. I come out the bike. It's just soaking wet sitting there. Like, what the heck? Yeah, here come the geese. Yeah. I don't know which way they come. They're, they're above the clouds or what? But anyway, always love the geese coming over mm -hmm. here. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a whole flock of them over there. They decided it's time to head on back this way. Maybe we're going to have a warm July, which is uh, February. July. <laughs> Imagine that. July being warm. Oh, yes. Yeah. But uh, anyway. That was a fun ride. Um, definitely worth it. No huge gain. It's, it, it reminds me a lot. The, the same thing with the 350 is um, it just it, it's just happier everywhere. Especially the you know the ability to pull on the top end. But um, anyway, on that, I'm gonna put everything away before we get wet standing here. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give her a thumbs up. And you guys have an amazing Monday or Tuesday. Heck yeah. All right. We'll see you in the morning. All right. Thanks for watching now. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.